so today we are going to be talking about the spirit there's its teeth which is a fable club show book read i am part of easy cat's fable book club which if you don't know who easy cat is he's like a sort of tiktoker sort of well book talker and sort of instagram sort of talker pretty much i love his content <laughs> like it all it always brings a smile to my face hello so I messed up here. What I meant to say was I am part of Kevin Norman's fable. <laughs> this is for Kevin Norman's fable, not Easy Cats. I have two different books for that. My brain got messed up, even though I wrote it down and I still got messed up. But I do enjoy Kevin Norman's content a lot. Like I very much relate to his content and just all of that. I I do enjoy both Easy Cats and Kevin Norman's content and just all of that. They both bring a smile to my face and I found out they both have Fable sort of book clubs so I joined both of them. I just wanted to clarify that next up. But the Amazon biography for this book is It's a New York Times bestseller, a blood-soaked and nauseating triumph that cuts like a scalpel and reads like your dark assignment. New York Times bestselling author Andrew Joseph Wright returns with a transgressive gothic horror of our time. Morris Vincent's Omnia Death Conquers All. London, 1883. The veil between the living and the dead has been. Violet eyed, eyed mediums commune with spirits under the watchful eye of the Royal Speaker Society. A 16 year old trans autistic Silas Bellwood. Of a whip his violet eyes and become an obedient speaker wife. After a failed attempt to escape an arranged marriage, Silas is diagnosed with fear sickness, a mysterious disease sending violet eyed women into madness and shipped away to Braxton finishing school and sanatorium. When the ghost of missing students are begging Silas for help, he decides to reach into Braxton's image and ex expose its guts to the world, so long as the school doesn't break him first. Featuring an artistic trans protagonist in a historical setting, Andrew Joseph White's much anticipated sophomore novel does not back down from exposing the violence of the patriarchy and the harm inflicted on trans youth while forced into conformity. A Chicago Public Library, Best of the Best, Book of Self-Awareness, Best Best Book of the Year, A School Library Journal, Best Book of the Year. So, Chapter 9, Silas sees this character Daphne, who they're both basically they're both trans, and just they just see each other and just that moment got me like I almost cried. I was just like, you guys are not going crazy. You guys, all it's okay for you guys to feel the way you feel. And like I hated how like the outside world like portray is portrayed, but also like I know that's how reality probably was at the time and we had to meet in the way still probably is which is so fucked up but like that moment you can tell in that moment that they actually care for each other and that's that's just but yeah chapter 10 this is just a denial of like students going like basically messing or like dying in the school at just some point there's basically a denial of that which yeah, that's not suspicious at all. <laughs> like... Okay, so... Chapter 11 sort of... Well, the intro sort of first couple sentences. Another day, another mask. Do not flinch, do not tremble, smile, and do as I'm told, which... That stuck out to me because... That's how I felt I was severely depressed. And I say was, but there are some moments, but it's just so much for that probably doesn't count. But yeah. So just chapters 12 through 13, this is intense transphobia and just this whole choking, which that's not okay. That's not okay at all. Like, <laughs> but chapter 18, Daphne feels like I click. Silas reads letters from Daphne and just, I just, I love it, like, 
and that just makes me so happy because like and not just that but also you can tell that Cyrus has feelings for Daphne like I was just going in my head like this story like that's so attractive and it's like got me but yeah one of the final chapters chapter 17 the Cyrus and Daphne so go on a date and just I'm just I'm just happy for them like that's all like if there's any fanfics send them not send them my way and just just I just a dating plan sort of fix, for example. Or a wedding and a coffee date, like or a panting or uh, panting, you know. Or like a picnic sort of painting sort of fix. If no one writes that, I fucking will. And this is the one time I have motivation to actually write something. Of course. <laughs> but um yeah, that's my that's pretty much my thoughts on the spirit band it's, it's teeth. I recommend giving this book a read or a listen or whatever. But just, yeah. Also, the nail reason. I don't know. Some Sometimes I think it suited. Sometimes I think it didn't. <laughs> but, yeah. So, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.